If you're in a shoegaze or attentive rock band and you want to rehearse home or at an untreated rehearsing space, noise is certainly a problem that you're going to have to deal with. So today we're going to talk a little bit about headphone monitoring systems for silent band practice. Hi everyone, welcome to the Man of Attentive Music. When I started my most recent band project, which is Supernova in 2020, uh, me and my band wanted to do like live shows and live gigs and stuff like that and we needed to rehearse home. We certainly couldn't make noise. So we started to research solutions for silent band practice at home and trying to find like what would be a good system that we could use to practice and, you know, not bother <laughs> all my neighbors. We ended up with a very like simple system and at first we didn't really have much money, like pretty much every band that's just starting out. And we used that very budget system for like two years and then we upgraded to something a little bit better. So today we're going to talk about these two systems, like kind of a budget version that we used when we started out and when we had not much money and a version that's kind of a little bit more advanced if you're in a band that has kind of the budget to spend on something a little bit more high end. So both systems uh, consist of three ingredients. An audio interface, which is where you're going to plug all your instruments. Uh, that includes e-drums, if you have, through a MIDI cable. Or if you have a MIDI audio interface, you can plug straight into your computer. Uh, you're going to plug vocals, bass, guitars, keys, all into these eight-channel audio interface. I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm talking about eight-channel audio interfaces, okay? This is kind of going to be the brain of our system. Uh, you can also buy these studio racks uh, by PreSonus or something like the Behringer XR18. I think that's how it's called. They were like way out of our budget when uh, me and my band started gigging together. So we needed something very cost effective and eight channel audio interfaces were kind of the way to go. And then this audio interface is going to send signal uh, to the next ingredient of our system, which is the headphone amplifier. A headphone amplifier is a very useful piece of gear if you went to silent rehearse because it's going to allow you to send individual personal headphone mixes to each and every bandmate. And that's a very important part of the setup because we don't want to use amps and we don't want to use like PA systems, nothing like that. Just something that you can rehearse with your band and monitor yourselves with very high quality and don't bother other people. And the third ingredient is going to be your notebook, Mac, uh, PC, whatever you have around with the DAW and you're going to route audio through that DAW, okay, out of the audio interface into the headphone amp and then into the headphones of the bandmates. I should say that I'm not being sponsored by any of the brands that I'm mentioning uh, in this video, okay? So now let's talk a little bit about the first system that me and my band came up with. Since money was very tight on us when we began playing together, uh, we went for the Behringer UMC 1820, which is an 8-channel USB 2.0 audio interface. This Behringer audio interface allowed us to rehearse home and we used it for two years and basically never had a problem with this. I have to admit that it's a very good piece of gear for the price. The preamps sound nice, they sound clean, they're not the best preamp sounding in the world, but again, if you're looking for something to rehearse with your band, which was what we were looking for at that time, and like record gigs, uh, if you want to take like not very expensive gear on the road with you, and this is a very nice contender for that, and I have to admit, we used it for two years and never really had a problem with this. Uh, I've used it within Logic and with Cubase on my old notebook, and I have to say that it does perform a little bit better in terms of latency on Windows PCs because of the driver provided by Behringer which is actually quite good. Never really had a problem with the driver. If you're using it on a Mac though, you're going to use uh, the class compliance driver and it's not going to be the best latency performance in the world. So just something for you to have in mind. Then we routed audio from the UMC 1820 into the Behringer PowerPlay HA4700. These units, uh, the headphone amps by Behringer are very common here in Brazil. So uh, me and my band, we are kind of used to have in-ear monitoring through these systems. They're definitely not perfect. They have a little bit of noise, but it's going to be a system that is going to allow you to rehearse quietly. To be completely honest with you guys, me and my band have never run into any problems with our system here at home. But when we gigged at a studio once, the studio had a Behringer power play. That power play shocked 
my bass player. So I should point it out for you guys. I don't know if this is Behringer's gear fault or if it is like the bad energy infrastructure at that studio. It could be that, but later on my band has upgraded to a better system, which consisted of a Focusrite 18i20, which is my drummer's audio interface of choice. It's an amazing audio interface. We used it at our last uh, vlog type of video. If you want to check it out, here's a little link for it. It sounds amazing. The preamps are better than on the Behringer unit, you can notice. Focusrite provides you with a very nice driver, which is Focusrite Control, but we are still using Logic's headphone uh, mixing system because we like to use like compressors and equalizers and even sometimes amp sims from Logic. So we basically route audio from the 18i20 nowadays into our new headphone amp, which is the PreSonus HP60. It's a really nice piece of hardware and yeah, both the Scarlett and the PreSonus headphone amp come with the talkback function, which is really useful for me. Like I'm the guy that knows how to use a DAW and stuff. I'm like the producer for a band. So it's a really nice feature to have. And if you're like in a recording session, it's going to be extra useful. I use it all the time. And you don't get that with the Behringer system that I've just showed you. Overall, I can say that both systems are going to get the job done, all right? But with the second system, the Scarlett Audio Interface and the PreSonus headphone amp, uh, it's a really low noise system. And the latency on the Mac uh, with the Scarlett Audio Interface is significantly better than with the Behringer unit. We don't have cracks and pops with any of the units, but with the Scarlett, we do have a little bit of a better latency. Uh, so yeah, that's something just for you guys to keep in mind, all right? Basically, the second system is going to cost you a little bit more, but the improvement in quality you're going to have is noticeable. Now I'm going to show you how to set everything up in your DAW in Logic, to be more specific, and talk a little bit about how you can wire everything up. After connecting all the instruments into your HN audio interface of choice, there are two main ways to use your headphone amp. The first and most simple way, uh, which is the way I'm going to recommend that you do because it's the safest way, in a way that you're not going to harm any of your gear, is to simply connect the main outputs of your audio interface or any output into the main inputs of your headphone amplifier of choice using two balanced TRS cables. This way is simply going to copy the main mix of your band into all the headphones uh, being distributed through the headphone amplifier. So you're not going to be able to use individual monitoring you know, mixes. If you want to use individual monitoring mixes, then I'm going to have to ask you to proceed carefully because the method that I'm using here can be a little bit dangerous, all right? So just to make things clear, we're using Y cables to connect stereo outs from our audio interface into the auxiliary inputs of our headphone amp. And that uh, can be dangerous. So I've contacted Focusrite and Behringer in order to make sure that I can make this connection with the headphone amplifiers that I've mentioned. I've even explained in the emails what were the headphone amps that I was using just to make sure that you guys can also make this connection home and you're not going to have any problems whatsoever, okay? So with the headphone amps and the audio interfaces that I've mentioned, the Focusrite 18i20, the Behringer UMC 1820, and the PowerPlay, uh, and the PreSonus HP60, you're going to be fine doing this sort of connection, okay? Simply connect a Y cable to the stereo outs from your audio interface into the aux ins of your headphone amps and you're going to be fine. Make sure that your audio interface of choice and headphone amp of choice can do this connection without causing any harm, okay? Simply contact the manufacturer and they're going to answer you without a problem. So to set everything up, all you need to do is connect your USB audio interface to your Mac, then open audio MIDI setup. As you guys can see, I have my Scarlett 18i20 USB set as 
sound input and output, so it's good to go. Here you can also set the clock source. It's also set to internal because I'm not using anything else than the audio interface itself. But if you were using like an ADAT system, here is where you would select the ADAT function. So now I'm going to open up the rehearsing session, the project uh, that I use with my band. After opening your Logic project, you're going to go to Preferences, Audio, and just make sure that you have your audio interface selected here as input device and output device. So after that, you're going to lay down the tracks for all your instruments that you're using, and then then open up your mixer, click X, and then select all the buses and channels like this, pressing shift and click. Then you're going to click here into sends. You're going to go into outputs, stereo, and here you have all the outputs of your audio interface. So I'm using three and four for my headphone mix, five and six for Luis's, my bassist headphone mix, seven and eight for my drummer's headphone mix, and that's it. So let's click this one click option and click here. That's it. My headphone mix is done. It's already sending signal through three and four outputs. Next, let's create my basis headphone amp, headphone mix, sorry. And next, let's create my drummer's headphone mix. Okay, click option and then click here. So you're going to send audio through those outputs, okay? After compressing and EQing and doing a little bit of a basic mixing so that the instruments are good to go, good to listen to, you're going to click shift and select everything again. And you're going to come in here and copy fader to send. So now you have a better starting point in order to mix uh, each one of the musician's headphone mix. Now, in order to mix the headphone mixes individually, you're going to come here into sends and faders. And you're going to select output three and four, or output five and six, or output seven and eight, depending on the headphone mix that you want to mix. And this here is the headphone mix for my drummer, which is seven and eight. So let's say he wants a little bit more bass. So let's raise up that bass, just an extreme example here. So here you can see that the bass in my drummer's mix is louder than the bass on my bass's mix and on my mix. Okay, you can also change, quickly change everything this way, but I really recommend that you do open up, you know, each and every one of the channels like this, because it's easier to set everything up and get the levels right for every one of the musicians quickly. Here are the outputs that are going to route into the headphone amps. So in case you're using the Behringer a headphone amp, uh, the knobs are a little bit sticky, kind of, they kind of have like presetted uh, volumes, so they're not like very precise. So if you want, you can control your volume through these faders. It's much more precise and effective. It's way better than those presetted places on the knobs on the Behringer unit. The PreSonus headphone amp doesn't have the these kind of presetted positions for the knobs on the volume knob. So it's way more flexible than the Behringer unit. If the musician wants it a little bit louder or quieter, you can control everything through that. Uh, you can use plugins into the individual headphone mixes as well as on the, like the stereo out. It's going to work just the same. Basically, that's it. That's how you set up a recording session or rehearsing session for your band in Logic in a very simple and easy way. That's how me and my band rehearse nowadays. This is the solution that we came across. I know that this is not the best way to rehearse with the band, but I have to admit it works for us and I don't think we're going to upgrade to any different kind of system soon. Please consider leaving a like if this video has helped you and yeah, consider subscribing if you enjoy this channel. And so this way you don't lose any of the new content that I upload. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope I do see you next time. Goodbye.